Hello, and welcome to Trending with the Tribune. I'm Khalees Steffens, media journalist and reporter for the Tennessee Tribune, and today we're going to talk with the Chancellor of Vanderbilt University, Dr. Nicholas Zephos. We will discuss his contributions to Vanderbilt and Fisk University. Chancellor, it's so good to have you on the program today, and tell us how is Vanderbilt doing today? Well, it's a real privilege to be here, Reginald, and I admire your work and admire, you know, kind of all you've been already talking to me about Nashville and the Nashville I moved to in 1987. Um, you know, I think Vanderbilt is doing extraordinarily well. Uh, I think the university continues to make great, great progress in a number of key areas, particularly, you know, making the American dream a reality. Mm -hmm. that you know education should not be based on the color of your skin, the size of your wallet, you know whether or not you grew up here or there. It really has to be based on this opportunity that comes to really, really talented people. And so I'm pleased that we're going to have a beautiful, diverse, uh, uh, multi-talented, university entering class in about a week and so nothing lifts my spirits more than 1600 and it's just a beautiful mosaic as I look out just people from you know North Nashville from Nigeria yeah. it's just and your optimism Reginald about for all the challenges this country has you just know that this is really the future and you have to work hard at it, and you have to be committed to it. And so, I always have challenges. We take nothing for granted. It's a, uh, um, you know, we just went through a, um, a t terrible, you know, kind of discussion about slashing research funding and education funding. And, you know, if there were the two areas where I would kind of say we need to really invest in America, it's more education and more research and discovery, which really creates the great jobs. Now, now you have been generous in your time of really, really reaching out as the the big elephant in the room, right? Yep. And you got the the end and bound foot. And a lot of those small institutions, you're part of a collective of institutions in Nashville, and you do a very good job of having a relationship with them. How have you achieved that relationship with schools and? How has it worked out? Well, I think one of the big advantages for Vanderbilt is we're in Nashville with all of these other really, really great schools. I mean, Fisk is older than Vanderbilt. Yeah. And so we need to do all we can to kind of say we want to partner. We can be better by working with you. Um, you know, we think together we can do really great things. And... That makes Vanderbilt better, and I think it makes Nashville better. And I think, frankly, having you know Tennessee State, having Fisk, having uh, Lipscomb, Belmont, that's what's driving the economy. You know, I, I I I love where the it's city, but it's really these educational institutions, and we have some fine uh, people that are actually starting to stay in Nashville more because of what the city is becoming. But um, I would say we're proud, we need to work harder, and we will continue to find really, really meaningful, substantive ways to engage and partner with the other schools. So um, one of the things that I think has been phenomenally successful is as we go through the great eclipse on August 21st, mm -hmm. is to realize that Vanderbilt working with Fisk is now created the most prominent visible program for underrepresented minorities getting graduate degrees in astronomy and physics. Really? We are number one in the country. Really? Yeah. Well, and, congratulations. And we are seeing these amazing people go out and make discoveries and so um, I'm really proud of that and that's the sort of thing we think. We we think that, well, uh, a FISC and a TSU, we can create more master's program, we can create partnerships in 
graduate programs. Um, you know, I'd like to see more teaching across the schools. Um, you have scheduling issues and transportation issues. But, you know, I taught at Fisk last year, and I have more faculty that want to teach at Fisk. And then we have a wonderful 3-2 program in engineering uh -huh. with Fisk. I'd like to see, or a 2-2 program, I'd like to see more graduate degrees and other degrees coming forward. But I think we've got some great success in partnering. I enjoy teaching over there. Um, you know, the students are phenomenal. And uh, I think our library collections working together on research and um, access to our collections and, you know, building stronger collections in the area of race relations, civil rights yeah. in America. Those are areas that you know, I've talked to um, Fisk a lot about. I've talked to uh, Forrest Harris about. I've talked to Glenda about. And I never want to tell them how to do their jobs because they've got enough people telling them that. Uh, but I, I think there are a lot of very promising and exceptionally important opportunities across teaching, research programs, internships, you know, pre-law advising. You know, using Vanderbilt really, we have all these talented students. We should be, you know, what's our medical school look like? What does our law school look yeah. like? What does the Owen school look like? Yeah. We should be recruiting aggressively in our own backyard. So we think it's a, we feel really lucky. I mean, obviously we're a big part of the educational landscape, but we're only as good as how we partner with our, our, our other schools in town. We really, really are. So, if you were going to do a short list of things you would recommend the incoming president <laughs> Fisk yeah. have on the short list, what be what's on your generic short list? Yeah. almost. Yeah. For yeah, but, who yeah. Are peers who are getting jobs as yeah. heads of schools. You know, it's really interesting, Reginald. I mean, I guess I just have a lot of miles on me. So people ask me, well, what would you recommend? And I'm like, well, first of all. Um, I have enough challenges running Vanderbilt, <laughs> and I have so many people saying you need to do this, you need to do that, that I've got a certain, you know, reluctance to say here are the four things yeah. that you should do because they've got a stack, they've got a suggestion box that's always overflowing. Um, you know, I let him know that, you know, we're here to be great partners and Vanderbilt's success and Fist's success go together. Okay. And so that, you know, I didn't want to kind of go and say, here are the five things you should do or can do. Um, now, having said that, I think a new president, and, you know, I worked at Vanderbilt for quite a while before I became the chancellor, but I think listening, learning, yeah. Touching people and kind of saying, this is a really exciting, important time for Fisk. Just reaching out to the community more and saying, tell me what you think Fisk can be. And I think that a lot of that sort of listening and learning is really important for a new president. And so, I think that that's the first thing I would say is just, to, you know, just really engage yourself deeply. And I've been, this is now my 11th year, including my interim year, and I find myself, you know, well, you know, I know Vanderbilt, I've been in 31 years. Yeah. I mean, you do I really know Vanderbilt? Yeah, and Vanderbilt. and so, yeah. you know, I've gotten much more, I think, okay, I'm going to have... 20 student dinners, and just bring students in. Tell me what you think. What can I do better? Or, you know, we really are trying to make everyone's experience at Vanderbilt a full opportunity. It's not good enough to be admitted. It's, yeah. it's really, what is the opportunity for everyone, regardless of race, background, religion, to thrive at our community? So I think it's really important to listen to people 
and say, what do you think? Um, I've scheduled, I, I do these kind of dinners with faculty where I'll say, I have something on my mind, could 10 of you come and talk to me about it? Because I want to know what you think. I mean, I could sit there in the office and... So I think outreach, engagement, and community building is really, really important. And even in my 11th year, I mean, I, I think I, I can do a lot better. And I'm looking forward to this year. So that would be my, my first thing. Um, I think uh, he has an incredible opportunity with Fisk's. As I say, Fisk is 1866. Yeah. You know, Vanderbilt was 1873. Right. So, to start a school a year after the Civil War? Yeah. In this, I mean, look at this country. And then they'll go back, you know, 151 years. Look and at say, it. And say, look at it today, and then we're going to start a school in 1866. Well, and then, what is in the character, the fiber, the continuous no. mission that says, what it's a different place I always say if I dug the Commodore up from when he gave the gift he'd be like what's this place <laughs> but so so I think I I think you know Fisk's place today and in you know the history of slavery and emancipation and you know segregation and Jim Crow and the threats of violence you know to hear that you know, they had to have guards on the roof when the school opened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, and so so I think the rich history and tradition, and then you bring that forward in some way. It's like, you know, the Commodore was not a particularly nice man. He was not educated, you know, other than his gifts to Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot. But he said you know, if through this gift I can heal up this country yeah. after the Civil War, I might have done a good thing. Yeah. So, I mean, not just now, but every day I go to work, I think, okay, this man was about bringing people together and trying to heal deep wounds of slavery and a civil war. And so how do... I and we, you know, 150 years later say, we're at it. We've got divisions. How do we bring people together? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of always the interesting thing, bringing those founding principles and traditions, but you know it's different. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm going to sit around and say, well, the Vanderbilt of 1873, that's the one we want. I mean, it's like, okay, well, it's small. It's all white, it's, you know, all man. It's like, no, that's not it. What in it can we take forward? And I think he'll do a phenomenal job of listening and then saying, this is who we are. And we're going to go por uh, forward. And uh, these are tough jobs. I mean, I've got a great university. And so, you know, there's no sleep. There's no giving up. And you just have to kind of... You know, in many ways, too, and again, I'm giving them way too much advice because I need as much advice as possible. You've got to be the eternal optimist. Yeah. I mean, there's so many obstacles and so many this is wrong and that, but it's like, you know, this is, this is where we're going to go. It's beautiful there. And I know it's hard to imagine that. Is it tougher now, though, from where you your branch went to raise money or to raise moral support? <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes they go together. Uh, Chancellor Kirkland once said um, there something like, there are very few problems at a university that are not readily resolved by large amounts of money. True. <laughs> and so, you know, and so, you know, when I think of we don't have any student loans for our undergraduates, mm -hmm. we eliminated that. Yeah. Anyone who gets admitted to Vanderbilt, it's need blind and it's all scholarship. Well, that's noble. It's exciting. It's empowering to young people, but it's expensive. True. And so, I think that you know the 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 fuel to run the university and really continue to sustain and grow it through time 
And look at Fisk, it's 100 and, you know, what was that, 151 years? Yeah. I mean, it's a remarkable, from 1866, too. I mean, a year after the Civil War. So I think money is really important. It, um, But I think you have to, you know, kind of articulate that vision for what, you know, when I started out, and I'm fortunate, you know, I have a lot of very significant donors, but I'll never forget, I started this program the week before Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, this is great. <laughs> I mean, I just, I've now got to go raise all this money, and I have great donors and great alumni yeah. and great supporters, um, but I was like, this is fun. Yeah. And, um... Give you a curveball. Oh, curveball. Yeah. I was, that was a, that was hitting the shoulder with a pitch after I was ducking. So, I, you know, I think our t people will resonate to a really exciting vision. And I'm sure, you know, that that's exactly the way he'll do it. And, um, that's kind of how I try to think of whatever I go out and I think also, you know, uh, you know, I, I never thought I'd be into the asking so many people for so much money, but you know, John, I think John Rockefeller said, "Don't ever be afraid to ask people to a really noble cause, because you're really offering the best investment opportunity they could ever, ever really have." And so, go ahead and ask them. And if they decline it, they just missed a great opportunity. Something to that effect. And I think that that's the way Fisk is, that's certainly how I try to think of Hannibal, which is, is there a better investment yeah. than educating that young person who is really smart and the parents might have sacrificed and, yeah, I mean, that's just, or, you know, making a discovery or, you know, training the next generation of underrepresented minorities in physics and astronomy? How do we see the universe? Through whose eyes? Well, we'll take them. Point well taken. Point well taken. We'll take a brief break and see how we're doing.